Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for your support. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more exciting stories like this. Let's dive right into today's thrilling adventure. Our story commences as our main character goes grocery shopping amidst news reports about a surge in animal injuries in Z City. Citizens are advised to avoid venturing out at night, but the authorities are currently investigating the situation, so there's no need to panic. Additionally, several people in X City have contracted influenza from an unidentified virus. The media in X City will continue to provide updates on the situation. However, our protagonist, engrossed in selecting tuna cans, believes it's harmless to stock up on canned foods. While absorbed in listening to music through his earphones, a woman in the store mentions to her friend that an elderly member of the Lee family, known for their good health, suffered a sudden emergency and passed away a few days ago. The friend wonders if it was due to influenza, and the woman confirms that it was indeed the case. She adds that the old man couldn't even survive for two days. The woman also remarks to her friend about the lack of peace in the world these days. Later, our protagonist loads their groceries into their truck, meticulously checking to ensure they have packed seeds, instant meals, frozen foods, meat, daily necessities, snacks, canned food, and other items. They realize they only need to top up on diesel before heading home. Moreover, they are aware of the urgency to cook for Han Han, as they have a deer, they hunted earlier in the day to prepare. While driving home, his girlfriend calls him and inquiries about a proposal she previously made. Referring to him as Tian Ran, she asks if he has considered her suggestion. He responds by expressing his intention to find a respectable job that allows him to maintain his dignity in public. Satisfied with his response, she agrees. However, he informs his girlfriend that he won't send Lien to an orphanage. Angered, Lien tells him that she is not biologically related to him and questions why he discusses marriage if he plans to bring a child into their relationship. Nevertheless, he reaffirms that Lien is his sister and an important member of their family. This upsets his girlfriend, who questions why she should raise a child who isn't her own. Frustrated with his lack of seriousness, she suggests breaking up if he cannot commit. He agrees reluctantly and is about to say something when something unexpected appears in front of him. He swerves to avoid it, cursing and feeling startled. He realizes it is a sheep and wonders if it was a dog initially. Noticing its severe head injury, he is shocked to see it still alive with red eyes. The sheep limps away from the road and into the bushes. He silently watches it before redirecting his attention to the road, deciding to leave it behind and not report it to the traffic police. Shortly after, he reaches home and proceeds to unload the groceries from his truck. Suddenly, someone addresses him as brother, causing him to turn around and spot a little girl with two dogs approaching him. Astonished by the multitude of items he purchased, she excitedly tells him that she came to help carry them. He hands her a small bag of food, and together, they make their way towards their home. The girl informs him that she completed all the tasks he assigned her, including feeding the cows, changing their water, and tending to the crops. She also expressed her fatigue and longing for her big brother's stew to help her feel better. He agreed and suggested making a carrot and venison stew to satiate her hungry stomach. She gladly embraced the idea, and they continued their conversation, bringing a smile to his face. However, one of the dogs started grazing on the side, prompting her to affectionately tap its head and call it Xiaobai, reminding it not to eat the crops. They continued walking joyfully, noticing sheep footprints along the way, while the cow, engrossed in grazing, observed them with red eyes from its fenced enclosure. Later, she mentioned that she had never witnessed a solar eclipse before and inquired if it was true that the sky would turn completely dark, akin to the evening. Meanwhile, the radio informed them that the most remarkable total solar eclipse of the century was imminent. As promised, she enthusiastically exclaimed how delicious the stew was while eating, remarking on her big brother's improved hunting and cooking skills. He informed her that the sun wouldn't be entirely obscured but would darken, emphasizing the need for her to wear the glasses he had provided to observe it safely. The radio announced that the countdown for the eclipse would commence. When the countdown began, she pointed outside and asked him about the unfolding event. Shocked, he rose to his feet and beheld the dark blue moon outside. Once the countdown reached zero, their electricity abruptly vanished. Anxiously, she asked him about the power outage and expressed how cold it had become. In the midst of the confusion, the dog began barking incessantly, and the radio emitted an unknown, loud noise. 
Fearfully, she gestured towards something and urged her big brother to look. Startled, he emerged from their home, only to discover that it was snowing. Perplexed, she inquired about the blizzard occurring in the middle of summer. He instructed her to quickly return to the house while he locked up the cattle and sheep, assuring her of his imminent return. He told Xiaobai to stay behind and take care of Han Han, and the dog barked in agreement. Anxiously, she implored him to hurry due to the chilling weather, but he reassured her not to worry. He then called the other dog, Xiao Hei, to accompany him, and they ventured into the stormy blizzard. He questioned if everything was okay, only to be momentarily blinded by the shining dark moon in the stormy blizzard. Looking up at the radiant dark moon in the sky, he pondered its inexplicable presence. Suddenly, Xiao Hei noticed something, diverting his attention from the peculiar plants, blizzard, and sun. Xiao Hei barked at an unknown entity and leapt behind him. Startled, he evaded a charging bull that appeared behind him. Xiao Hei retaliated against the bull, causing it to turn around and flee. Realizing his compound bow should be nearby, he spotted it immediately. The bull flung Xiao Hei away, which filled him with frustration. He aimed at the bull, but he noticed a blue target light in front of him, leaving him perplexed about its origin. Nevertheless, he released the arrow, which struck the bull in the face, eliciting a painful cry. Feeling a surge of excitement, he believed the bull should be dead, only to witness it charging fiercely towards him, instilling panic. Shouting that it was still alive, he reached for more arrows, only to realize that he had run out of ammunition. The system indicated that the ammunition count was zero and there were three living beings in close proximity, momentarily confusing him. However, he quickly understood the need for prompt action. When he attempted to retrieve an arrow, he couldn't believe that he had indeed run out. Suddenly, the bull reappeared before him and struck him, sending him flying. Coughing in pain, he looked at Xiao Hei, who barked and pointed towards their house, realizing that Xiao Hei was signaling that the danger emanated from there. As the bull had undergone a mutation, Han Han was no longer safe. On the other hand, Xiao Bai growled at Han Han in anger, prompting her to inquire about its behavior. Xiao Bai continued growling and lunged at her, but fortunately, Tian Ran arrived in time and kicked Xiao Bai away. Frustrated by even Xiao Bai's transformation, he informed Han Han that he would take her to a safe house where she should hide and avoid coming out since it was still perilous outside. Han Han expressed concern for Xiao Bai, but he explained that Xiao Bai had become dangerous. He instructed her to listen to her big brother and never leave the safe house. Carrying Han Han in his arms, he dashed towards the farmhouse, doing his best to reach it. However, the system appeared, confirming that it wasn't an illusion. He saw that the number of living beings in the vicinity increased to four. He placed Han Han inside the farmhouse, urgently urging her to enter and emphasizing that she should trust her brother and not venture outside, regardless of the circumstances. The system displayed five living beings within range as he forcefully closed the door. Xiao Bai attacked him from behind, causing him to growl and kneel in pain. Concerned, Han Han called for her brother, and Xiao Hei defended against Xiao Bai, earning praise. He fled while instructing Xiao Hei to hold on, as he would come to its aid after dealing with the pursuing bull. He grabbed the nearby axe, turned around, and faced the charging bull. Evading at the last moment, he caused the bull to collide with a tree. The bull's horn got stuck in the tree, and he raised his axe, commanding it to go to hell. However, Xiao Bai bit him on the neck, worrying him about Xiao Hei fate. Aware that he couldn't afford to die yet, the bull freed itself and impaled its horn into his side, causing him to cough up blood. Suddenly, he heard a continuous noise that irritated him, wondering why it was so loud. The system revealed that the Apocalypse survival game was initiating a match, although he couldn't see it clearly, reminding himself not to fall asleep. Numerous system pop-ups appeared, prompting him to ponder the significance of the revolving door and growing annoyed by the noise. He demanded that the system allow him to deal with the two beasts in front of him first and shut up. The system disclosed that he was a player named Li Tian Ran, but he was preoccupied with urging the animals around him to flee. Slowly releasing his grip on the axe, he silently wished for Han Han's survival. Suddenly, the system signaled a successful match in the Apocalypse survival game, and he found himself submerged underwater, hearing the system announce the successful loading of the apocalyptic game. Player Li Tian Ran was identified, and he found himself in a poorly managed level 1 shelter. The shelter's level 1 skill reward was the Eye of Truth, and his class was categorized as B. 
He needed 8 million points to upgrade the shelter to fortress level. Suddenly, he saw a shining light that jolted him awake, bringing him back to reality. He was surprised to find himself alive, sitting up immediately. Despite the torn clothes and bloodstains, all his wounds had miraculously disappeared, leaving him perplexed about the mysterious circumstances. He wondered about the bull's whereabouts and the fate of Xiao Bai. Recalling the pain of being impaled by the bull's horn, he massaged his head. To his shock, he saw the bull severed in half and Xiao Bai lying motionless nearby. He couldn't comprehend what had happened after losing consciousness since the injuries inflicted on the animals were beyond human capabilities. Suddenly, he remembered the sensation of being possessed by the system and felt an electric surge through his body. The system indicated that his status had been activated, and he instinctively punched Xiao Bai, sending it. Flying towards the wall, he then picked up the axe from the ground and attacked the bull. The bull screamed in pain, but he stared at it with unconscious determination as his own wounds slowly healed. He leapt towards the bull, swinging his axe once again. A blinding light flashed before his eyes, bringing him back to reality, but the intense pain throughout his body overwhelmed him, causing him to scream and struggle to catch his breath. Eventually, he managed to calm down. He realized that he had died once but had been brought back to life, and the ability to heal and create explosions was not his own but likely a result of the system. Accepting this reality was difficult for him. The system displayed a message that the shelter had been successfully bound, and the mall points had been activated. Beginners' rewards had been distributed, and players were advised to check them. Puzzled by the messages, he felt another electric shock, and the system revealed that the first round of the destruction season had begun. There were still 30 days until the next round, during which natural disasters would occur, and the shelter would be the only safe place. His mission was to survive the game and build the strongest possible shelter, akin to a castle. He wondered if the system's information was directly implanted in his brain. Understanding that this was just the beginning and that the first round had already contaminated the land humans relied on for survival, he pondered how the second round would unfold. Approaching Xiao Bai, he noticed that it had passed out. Recalling what the system had mentioned, he knew that both Xiao Bai and the bull must have mutated after accidentally consuming radiation poison plants. He decided to carry Xiao Bai on his back, aware that their bodies had been strengthened after the mutation, making them extremely dangerous. His first priority was to secure Xiao Bai in a cage to prevent any harm. He made his way back into the farmhouse, thinking he should check on Han Han first. Descending the stairs, he attempted to turn on the light but realized that the power system had not been restored yet, and there was no signal. The communication system was also not functioning, but he knew he could handle it with a diesel generator. As he looked around, he noticed the absence of movement and wondered where Han Han was. His panic grew when he spotted Han Han's little feet behind a box, motionless. He called out her name urgently and quickly picked her up, asking her what was wrong. Luckily, the system displayed that she was simply sleeping, which relieved him. When Han Han woke up, she felt someone holding her and saw that it was her big brother. He asked her why she hadn't spread out the mattress and instead slept directly on the floor. She obediently replied that she had been waiting for him downstairs, but then there was a bright white light, and she couldn't remember anything. She asked if he was okay, and he reassured her, telling her that everything had been resolved. She inquired about Xiao Bai's whereabouts, and he explained that Xiao Bai was injured, so they couldn't meet for the time being. He suggested that she stay there and sleep, as he had some matters to attend to. She agreed, and after putting Han Han to sleep, he stood up and walked away. Moments later, he realized that there were no more mutant domestic animals around, which led him to contemplate the differences between the system and online games. He examined the beginner's bonus on the system, hoping to find special weapons or skills, but it seemed inadequate, and he couldn't start the game until he accumulated more points. He noticed a question mark icon on the system and clicked on it, discovering that the common currency in this system was points. He also learned that the seed item could be planted in poisoned land, indicating its high cost, which disappointed him as he considered himself poor. He understood that he could only rely on the stockpile of supplies at home, as those in direct contact with the ground were likely contaminated in various ways. With the network disconnected, he believed it would take some time to recover, and he didn't have an optimistic outlook on the situation outside. After contemplating, he remembered the bull in Xiao Bai, leading him to conclude that all sources of pollution needed to be dealt with. He proceeded to burn down the animal's house and watched it engulfed in flames. 
He returned to the farmhouse, opened one of its doors, turned on the lights, and found a shelf filled with various weapons. He selected a gun, concealed it in his jacket, left the communication radio near the sleeping Hanhan, and walked outside the farmhouse. As he drove away in his truck, he noticed that he was being chased by mutated animals, both in the air and on land. Frustrated that these creatures were all drawn to him, he took out his gun, planning to eliminate them quickly. However, he was surprised when an army truck suddenly appeared behind him and opened fire. The army truck maneuvered to block his path, forcing him to panic and bring his truck to a halt to avoid a collision. The turret of the army truck turned, pointing a machine gun at him, intensifying the tension. The soldier operating the machine gun aimed at him, and he raised his hands in the air. The soldier then reported over the radio that the road surface alarm had been lifted. He noticed that there were military forces stationed near the base, suggesting that there might be a riot in the city. He wondered about Zhang Lin's situation. The soldier cautioned him about the dangers outside and advised him to avoid wandering around. He explained that he had left home due to the lack of supplies and asked the soldier to provide an update on the current situation in the city. Over the radio, the soldier reported that Area B was under attack by mutant cats and required immediate reinforcements. He was instructed to proceed to the designated government supply point to acquire necessary provisions, as the city was no longer safe. He acknowledged the instructions and followed the army truck. While driving, he noticed a helicopter flying above them, indicating the severity of the mutant creature situation, as even military aircraft were being deployed. Despite his breakup with Jan Lin, he couldn't simply remain idle in this post-apocalyptic world. He decided to check on her situation along the way, as they had known each other before. Upon arriving in the destroyed city, he overheard a soldier reporting another looting incident on 20th Street and the discovery of a female body at Pond No. 20. As he glanced around while driving, he caught sight of a destroyed police car in his truck's mirror. Apart from police cars, there appeared to be only ambulances remaining on that street. He witnessed ambulance personnel trying to assist an injured woman, shouting that the patient had lost too much blood and was going into shock due to another case of lung damage from food poisoning. A man yelled at his co-worker to hurry up and prepare an adrenaline shot, but the co-worker expressed frustration, explaining that they had run out of cardiac stimulants due to the overwhelming number of patients. Suddenly, a glass shattered, and the woman pleaded with her injured husband not to fall asleep. She cried, telling him they were almost at the hospital. However, the man resignedly told his wife to forget it because there were no available beds, and they couldn't even get through to the emergency hotline. Witnessing this, he realized that the healthcare system was also partially paralyzed and unable to cope with the effects of radiation from the plants. He clenched the steering wheel in frustration, wondering if he could successfully guide Hanhan through the challenges of the game. A moment later, at the designated emergency supply site, a man took charge and directed the citizens, informing them that it was the government-designated location for emergency supply procurement. He emphasized the importance of everyone willingly adhering to the rules, instructing them to form an orderly queue and avoid rushing. He also explained that each person had a purchase quota, with rice priced at 160 per kilo and vegetables at 280 per kilo. A police officer informed the crowd that each individual could purchase 5 kilos of rice, 5 kilos of flour, and 1 kilo of vegetables by presenting a valid ID. However, the people waiting in line grew furious with each other, leading to disputes over their positions and the available food. A woman hugged her crying little girl, who was desperately in need of food. The scene was chaotic, with people fighting for their place in line and for the limited available food, driven by their own selfishness. He knew that his ex-girlfriend's rented apartment was just around the corner to the left, so he drove there. However, a van suddenly pulled in front of him, catching him by surprise. He managed to maneuver his truck just in time. A man emerged from the van, scanning his surroundings while holding something in his arms. He knocked on his truck and asked if he had come from the procurement site. In response, he asked the man what he wanted. The man pretended to recognize him and explained that he had seen him desperately searching for food in the market. He then displayed a bag of vegetables and fruits, listing watermelon, cucumber, pumpkin, tomatoes, and rice, and asked what he needed because he had it all. He examined the food and playfully teased the man, saying that if he dared to take a bite in front of him, he would buy everything. The man stepped back and asked what he meant, expressing surprise that he didn't trust his friend. He asked if he could buy some vegetables from him, but he simply told the man to move out of his way. 
Still, the man shouted at him, questioning why he spoke to him that way when he was a law-abiding citizen. Annoyed, he pointed his gun at the man, causing him to panic. The man urged them to talk it out, emphasizing his compliance with the law. He sternly warned the man that if he caught him engaging in heartless business, he wouldn't hesitate to use his gun and that no one would object. He then ordered the man to leave, which he did. The man stepped back, expressing his understanding, and returned the food to his van. He considered it a difficult encounter and drove away. As he continued on his way, he finally reached the destination he had in mind. He parked his truck and approached a partially destroyed apartment building. He knocked on the door of his ex-girlfriend's apartment, but there was no response. He reached for the spare key hidden under a rag, wondering if she wasn't at home. Using the key, he opened the door and called her name. To his surprise, he found the living room in disarray, which was unusual for her as she was typically a neat person. He surveyed the room and noticed contaminated fruits and medicine boxes on the table. He picked up a box of Norlex acid antibiotics, which were used to treat various bacterial infections. He knew that the local pharmaceutical company that produced it had a terrible reputation, making him wonder why she would buy from them. Examining the surroundings, he observed that there were no signs of forced entry on the door, ruling out accidental poisoning. The apartment had been ransacked, yet it didn't fit her style. He wondered where she might have gone in this chaotic world. A few days later, while at the farmhouse, the system displayed information about the poorly managed city outskirts. The shelter, rated as a guest house, offered the eye of truth as a skill reward. This skill allowed him to see detailed information about objects and creatures in front of him. Additionally, as a level 1 shelter privilege, he had the remote control shelter, which allowed him to monitor the real-time status of the shelter and all items in the mall and command it at any time. There was an area of 30 mu available for fishing, animal husbandry, planting, and construction. However, the profit and loss status were marked as a loss, and the greenhouse was in a dilapidated state. He realized that he needed to earn enough points to upgrade the farm items without affecting the development of the anti-radiation grade. He was engrossed in digging the ground with a grape hoe when Hanhan -han called him over in an excited manner. She wanted to show him that the seeds had sprouted. He asked her to come and take a look, and she was amazed to see a tomato seedling. The maturity time was only 48 hours or 2 days, which made him happy because it meant that the anti-radiation seeds worked as described by the system. The short maturity period was a positive sign, and he believed that with more points, he and Hanhan -han could survive in the post-apocalyptic world. Hanhan -han mentioned that she had thought all the planted seeds had withered, and she was worried they wouldn't have any food. She thanked him for obtaining the seeds, and he assured her that her big brother always found a way. He asked her if she remembered the rules, he had explained to her. She laughed and assured him not to underestimate her. She recalled the rules not to eat food from anyone except him, not to leave the farm without his permission, and to hide if she encountered any strange animals. She forgot the next part, and he reminded her to keep an eye on Xiao Hei and not let it eat anything it wanted. She affirmed that she understood, and Xiao Hei barked in agreement. Two days later, the system indicated that the anti-radiation crops were ripe, and he should collect them as soon as possible. He noticed that the harvest was good and picked one of the tomatoes. The system informed him that radiation-resistant tomatoes were nutritious and long-term consumption could effectively improve the body's condition. They also had a storage time of 30 days. He wondered if the tomatoes could improve his physique, so he took a bite. The tomato was sweet, and he felt a warm sensation throughout his body. The fatigue from the past few days of work vanished. In this food-scarce post-apocalyptic world, he not only had access to food but also received attribute bonuses as the crops upgraded. It seemed like he was on his way to becoming a full-fledged farm owner in the system, unlocking permissions, making mall purchases, and upgrading shelters. All of these depended on points, and different functions required varying amounts of points to unlock. The primary source of points was the exchange system, primarily used for recycling crops, livestock meat, and minerals. These items were divided into different price categories based on different grades, starting from the lowest anti-radiation grade crops, then ancient medical grade crops, followed by god-tier powerful crops, and the highest supreme god-tier enhanced crops. In level 1, anti-radiation grade crops were valued at 1 point per kilogram, level 2 ancient medical grade crops were 100 points per kilogram, level 3 god-tier powerful crops were 1000 points per kilogram, 
and level 4 Supreme God tier enhanced crops were 100,000 points per kilogram. The system provided a one-stop service from supply and sales to recycling, and as long as they had enough points, they could rapidly turn the farm into a top-tier military base, which he was looking forward to. He was pleased with the tomatoes he had grown, which were just anti-radiation grade crops. Three more grades of crops were yet to come, promising even more impressive additional effects. He looked around at the harvest of ancient medical grade crops and noticed that a few were ripe. However, he expected the 10% maturity rate of the ancient medical grade crops. The system showed him that these were ancient medicinal grade carrots with a 100% growth rate. The carrots had the remarkable effect of eliminating all negative effects such as poison, illness, and irreversible damage caused by negative effects. What's more, their storage time was unlimited, which left him amazed and relieved, as they no longer needed to worry about medical treatment. Later, he finished arranging some of the harvested crops and planned to sell 70% of the food for points, keeping the rest as reserves in his backpack. The system asked him to confirm the recycling of 200 kilograms of radiation-resistant crops, and he did so. The system indicated that the recycling was successful, rewarding him with 2,000 points. In addition, three medicinal-grade crops were stored in the warehouse along with 30 kilograms of anti-radiation-grade crops. The system congratulated him for completing his first recycling and achieving the Master of Recycling achievement, rewarding him with a smart working robot of agricultural type. Receiving a reward for his first recycling surprised him, and he thought that the achievement system could offer valuable items. He picked up the small robot and initially underestimated its usefulness. However, he noticed that it appeared to be staring at him, which made him wonder if it somehow sensed his thoughts. The robot then leapt from his hand and started to perform tasks at an impressive speed. He began to consider the idea that his consciousness might be connected to the system, and the robot he obtained through the system could directly receive commands from his brain. He changed his mind and realized that the robot was quite capable. This development led him to consider the possibilities of acquiring a combat robot in the future to enhance Hanhan's safety, which he found to be a convenient prospect. Later, he called Hanhan for a meal and told her to stop watching cartoons. He informed her that they would be having big chicken legs today to celebrate the successful seed germination. She asked him if they should be more careful with food from now on. He replied that they could start planting again and also eat some of the stored food from earlier. This made her feel touched. He told her that she could eat freely at home, but if anyone outside found out there was food at home, she would be forbidden from eating for three days. This surprised her, and she exclaimed that one day without food was already cruel enough. Then she happily assured him that she wouldn't tell anyone. He agreed and told her that they should eat because she must be craving something else after two days of instant noodles. He gave the first big chicken leg to Zohai and thanked it for protecting Hanhan and him. Hanhan hugged Zohai and told him that it was the best. But then she felt sad and wondered if Xiaobaid was feeling better now. He was silent for a moment and then reassured her not to worry about Xiaobaid because it was still too injured to come to see her temporarily. However, once Xiaobaid healed, he promised to let it come out and play with them. She agreed and he told Hanhan absolutely not to go to the attic to disturb Zobai's rest, to which she agreed. Meanwhile, behind the farm, Zobai was aggressively growling. He was surprised when the system warned him that someone was trying to invade. He ordered the system to access the monitoring screen, and it began to scan the appearance of the invader. It showed him that the invader was a 42-year-old male, unharmed, and the threat level was 3. He recognized his uncle Nan and was curious about how he ended up there. Stepping outside, he approached Nan and asked if something was wrong. Nan tossed away his cigar, addressing him as, young boss, and explained that he needed to ask for help. Nan inquired if he had any extra food on his farm because his own house had been robbed, leaving him without any stocked food. The food available in the market was too expensive for him. Nan shyly requested if he could borrow some food, acknowledging that he didn't have much stock either. The previous crops had also been destroyed due to mutation. He assured Nan that it was alright and that he could lend him some food, although not a large quantity. Nan expressed gratitude and thanked him profusely. He handed Nan a bag of instant noodles, explaining that it was all he could spare. He advised Nan to rest and think of other ways to overcome his situation. Nan agreed and thanked him again. He wished Nan good luck, but Nan reciprocated the sentiment and walked away. He knew that the food he shared with Nan would only last Nan's family for three to five days. 
Although he had enough food for himself, he understood the unpredictability of people's behavior in the future, so he decided to keep his secrets hidden. He also planned to quietly give away the regular vegetables stored in the freezer. Later, they were in his truck when Han Han expressed her desire to watch, Little Magic Fairy, at home. He informed her that the farm had not been cleared of mutated animals yet, so he didn't feel comfortable leaving her alone. She asked where they were going, and he replied that they were going to her grandfather Nan's place to bring him some food. Han Han reminisced about Nan, who used to come to their house and help, and the older brother who would give her candy. He reminded her that she could only have one candy a day, which made her panic and deny that anyone sneaked her candy. They arrived at Nan's neighborhood, noticing the unusual quietness. He speculated that people must have been afraid of their domestic animals mutating and getting rid of them. As he unloaded the food from the truck, Nan panicked and called out to his son, Xiao Tian, asking what he had done the previous day. Xiao Tian coughed continuously, causing Nan to become shocked. They witnessed Xiao Tian coughing up blood, and Nan cried out in worry, asking why his condition was worsening despite seemingly getting better earlier. Han Han anxiously asked if Nan's son was going to die because of the blood he was vomiting. He reassured her that it was okay and that she should stop looking. He realized that the symptoms were similar to accidentally eating a radioactive vegetable. He wondered if the dry foods he gave to Nan had run out so quickly. Then he remembered the medicinal grade carrots and contemplated using them as a test subject to see if Xiao Tian would survive or not. On the other hand, Nan anxiously lays his son down and exclaims with frustration that the doctors at the hospital claimed there were no available beds. They also stated that even if there were beds, they couldn't cure him. Xiao Tian clutches his neck in pain and cries, causing Nan to cry as well. He desperately asks his son what he should do, but Xiao Tian's eyes roll up as he continues to cough. Suddenly, something is thrown at their window and lands on the bed. Nan angrily demands to know who threw it and tells them to leave. However, Xiao Tian manages to signal his father to wait as he points to the object that landed on the bed. Nan instructs his son not to move while he investigates. To his shock, he discovers fresh vegetables inside when he opens it. Nan notices a paper ball among the vegetables and finds a carrot inside with words written on the paper. Nan reads the letter, which states that if he doesn't want Xiao Tian to die, he should feed him that carrot. He angrily questions if the sender is crazy and berates them for mocking him with a carrot when the big hospitals couldn't help Xiao Tian. Nan breaks down, questioning the use of having fresh vegetables now, and tells his poor son that he is useless. Despite Xiao Tian's fading vision, he manages to call his father and hold his hand, expressing his desire to try the carrot because he would still die if he just lay there, but he wants to live. Nan is stunned for a moment, but ultimately agrees to his son's request, acknowledging that the hospital couldn't cure him anyway and that he can't simply watch him die in front of him. He puts the carrot in Xiao Tian's mouth and urges his son to chew it quickly. Xiao Tian chews the carrot, but suddenly screams and convulses in pain, causing Nan to panic and call out to him in worry. Xiao Tian vomits blood onto the side of his bed and continues to do so until his pale skin starts regaining color. Nan notices the change and cries tears of joy, telling Xiao Tian that it's amazing. He smiles upon hearing that Xiao Tian is getting better. Outside, the lamp slowly lights up as the power returns, indicating that the signal should be good. He attempts to call his girlfriend, Jiang Lin, but the phone keeps ringing until a recorded message informs him that the number he dialed is currently unavailable and advises him to try again later. Meanwhile, in the car, Lin's phone rings in her pocket, irritating the driver who asks whose phone is ringing. The man takes the phone and realizes that the signal is back. The driver informs him that it belongs to the woman in the back and suggests turning off her phone. The man asks the driver how much food they received after it was delivered, and the driver replies that they wouldn't have to worry about food and drink for at least a few months. This makes the man laugh as he comments on how exciting it is to work with his overweight brother. The man then asks the driver what he thinks they want with those people, but the driver replies that he doesn't care and that they're only there to take the money and keep quiet. Meanwhile, on the road, Han Han tells him that her older brother is very strong because she witnessed how much blood Xiao Tian vomited, yet simply eating a carrot made him fine. She observes how quickly Xiao Tian's body changes from grey to blue, finding it fascinating. Han Han continued to engage him in conversation with her vivid imagination, giving him the impression that she had a deep love for animation. Her descriptions were incredibly detailed. However, 
Their interaction was interrupted when something suddenly jumped onto the roof of his truck, causing him to momentarily lose control and wonder what was happening. A monstrous hand appeared in front of them, followed by a creature with red eyes, a mutated monkey. The monkey growled menacingly, instilling panic in him. He urgently told Han Han to hold on tight as he maneuvered his truck to the side, hoping to make the monkey fall off. However, the creature clung tightly to the truck and attempted to attack him from inside. In response, he pulled out his gun, shouting for it to get down, and fired at the area where it was holding on. Despite his efforts, the monkey leapt in front of his truck. Frustrated, he started the truck again and drove it forward, but the monkey stubbornly clung on. He shielded Han Han with his other arm and forcefully rammed the truck into a nearby tree, causing the monkey to collide with it. Taking aim, he shot the creature in the head, causing it to explode. Stepping out of his truck, he inspected the lifeless monkey lying in front of it and discarded it. However, his attention was drawn to a serial number on the animal's arm, leaving him wondering about its origin since there were no nearby breeding farms or zoos. Then, he recalled the brand of a pharmaceutical company, Tannin Pharmaceuticals, realizing it was the only nearby establishment. Meanwhile, in a large building, numerous animals were flying around, creating a chaotic scene. Back at Tian Ran's house, he instructed Han Han to watch some animation as he had something to attend to. She agreed, and he made his way to the basement of their farmhouse. Sitting in front of Xiao Bai, who was confined in a cage, Tian Ran sighed while wearing gloves. The system asked him if he wanted to administer the medicinal carrot, and he replied affirmatively. He forcefully fed the carrot to Xiao Bai, believing that since the medicine could cleanse toxins from irradiated vegetables, it could also restore Xiao Bai to his former self. After inserting the entire carrot into Xiao Bai's mouth, he let go and hoped for the carrot to work. Xiao Bai glared and growled at him in anger, but suddenly, Xiao Bai let out a loud scream. On the other hand, Han Han heard a deafening thunder sound, causing her to tremble in fear. She stood up, assuming it was a powerful lightning strike, and felt a bit scared, wondering why her older brother hadn't arrived yet. Determined to find him, she ventured into the basement. Moving silently, she planned to surprise him from behind. As she approached him, she startled him, causing him to jump in shock. Worriedly, he looked at her, but she laughed and playfully asked if he was scared. Just as she was about to share something with him, he noticed something on the ground. To her horror, Han Han saw Xiao Bai lying on the ground, covered in blood. Overwhelmed, she lost her balance, prompting her brother to urge her to compose herself. Tearfully, she asked him why it happened and if they had any carrots that could save lives. Then, she implored him to feed the carrot quickly. He explained to her that carrots couldn't save mutated living beings like Xiao Bai. However, before he could finish his sentence, she expressed her refusal, stating that she didn't want Xiao Bai to die in vain. She screamed Xiao Hei's name in anguish and cried uncontrollably. A little while later, they proceeded to burn Xiao Bai's body and buried it near the tree. Han Han remained silent as he held her hand, sensing the dropping temperature and suggesting they return. He called out to Han Han to join them for dinner, mentioning that it was her favorite food. However, she continued watching anime without acknowledging him. He sighed and instructed Xiao Hayes to stay with Han Han in the house, to which the dog barked in agreement. Checking the system, he noticed that the radiation-resistant crops had matured and needed to be harvested in a timely manner. Clicking on the system, he saw that the crops had been successfully harvested, with the radiation-resistant ones weighing 500 kilograms and the ancient medicinal-grade crop weighing 10 kilograms. His mini-robot jumped onto his shoulder while he focused on the system, which showed that the points had been successfully redeemed. He decided to upgrade his dilapidated greenhouse from level 1 to level 2. However, the system warned him that his defense shelter was only rated at level 3 and could only protect against small wild animals, posing a high risk. It recommended establishing a defense system as soon as possible. He agreed with the system, realizing that improving the farm's safety should be his top priority. With the current crop level growing rapidly, he could temporarily delay expanding production. He upgraded the wall reinforcement from level 1 to level 2, purchased a perimeter power grid, and obtained a radar parade level 1. Noticing that he had few points remaining, he saw something in the item shop that caught his attention. Unfortunately, it cost 3,500 points, frustrating him as he didn't have enough. He considered selling the grain stored in the warehouse to earn more points if needed. 
Determined, he decided to purchase the two robots first. The system confirmed the successful purchase, and he acquired a level 1 hummingbird, with a load of 100 one hundredths, damage of 0 one hundredths, speed of 5, and defense of 1. Its attack method involved shooting. He also obtained a level 2 hound, a combat warrior with a load of 50-50, fuel capacity of 100 one hundredths, speed of 4, damage of 6, and defense of 5. Its attack methods included burning, shooting, and biting. Mentally commanding the hummingbird warrior, he watched as it crushed fallen leaves with precise bullet shots, impressing him with its sniping abilities. He was relieved to have an air patrol sniper at his disposal and decided to test its ground combat strength. Ordering the hound warrior, he witnessed it gather power in its mouth and blow a huge stone into pieces, further reassuring him. He entered the house and called out to Han Han, who was still engrossed in television. A robot dog appeared next to her, and he explained that it would now follow and protect her, asking her to give it a name. She agreed to the name Zhao Bai. Meanwhile, in the Tannen Pharmaceuticals building, a man reported that the out-of-control samples had been cleaned up, and only sample number 7's data was steadily rising. He remarked that it could easily punch through 5 mm thick steel plates. The man in the suit inquired about the situation on the other side, and the other man responded that their vice president, Ren, was already highly dissatisfied with their failure to donate medical equipment. If she were to find out, it would be detrimental, and reporting it to the head office would be even worse. The man in the suit firmly grasped his seat as the general manager of Chanan Pharmaceuticals, Liang Tanu, sat down with a smile. Tanu assured the man that it was merely a minor incident involving a girl and had been carried out discreetly. If Ren wanted to investigate, she would have to know where to begin. The man agreed with Tanu but reminded him that the head office was keeping a close eye on them. Tanu instructed the man to ensure that Chen kept a watchful eye on Ren Xiao and prevented her from disrupting their business. The man agreed and left the room. Tanu turned his chair around and smiled, contemplating the possibility of a great treasure. Shortly after, a woman approached the receptionist and inquired about Liang Tanu's whereabouts. The receptionist apologized and addressed her as Vice President Ren. The receptionist informed Ren that Tanu was currently absent from the company and that she was making things very difficult for them. However, Ren forcefully opened Tanu's office door and confronted him, demanding an explanation for his actions. She criticized him for neglecting his responsibilities as a medical company, particularly at a time when the entire southern region's medical system was paralyzed. She urged him to lead his staff in actively cooperating with hospitals and donating equipment and medicines instead of being preoccupied with animal experiments. Tanu retorted that it was his manager's office and deemed her intrusion inappropriate. He argued that as a businessman, his primary goal was to profit from all endeavors, and he doubted that today's medical treatment could effectively address the global disease. Ren was taken aback by his response, but Tanu reminded her that she too was a shareholder in the company and enjoyed the right to dividends. He asked her to imagine the immense rewards they could reap if they were able to develop a solution. Intrigued, Ren inquired about the progress of his research, mentioning that even the Yan Wang federal government had yet to develop any effective drugs. She expressed her intention to visit his laboratory and her pendant necklace emitted a sound. However, Tanu admitted that he was only joking and questioned how they could develop a solution so quickly. He proposed that with increased cooperation and investment in manpower, progress would be accelerated. Ren informed him that she would visit the lab later to assess the progress but insisted on seeing it first before fully committing to the project. Tanu welcomed her and arranged for a personal escort. She agreed to go and he assured her that he would see her out later. A man whispered to Ren that the technical team claimed her time in the office was too short and they could only perform a preliminary scan. He also mentioned that the entrance to the secret laboratory was likely not in Tanu's office. This revelation frustrated Ren, who referred to Tanu as an old fox. She then inquired if they had obtained a statement from the captured scientist, to which the man replied negatively, as they were blindfolded during every entry and exit. However, they did manage to obtain the key card, earning the man's praise. He handed her the key card, leaving her pondering where else it could be used apart from the known locations. She speculated that the most dangerous place might also be the safest and believed she knew its whereabouts. Later, a director introduced himself as Tuai, responsible for accompanying and providing explanations to Ren. He would also show her around. Ren suggested they first assess the progress of the experimental subjects, to which Tuai agreed and led the way. 
They arrived at the area where the captured animals were held, and the director explained that subject number 7 was the only one in the experimental batch that didn't become uncontrollably powerful. Although its power increased tenfold, it still exhibited some instability and aggression. While they were conversing, a panicked man approached the director and whispered something to him, surprising both of them. As they whispered to each other, she observed them with a smile and apologized for the interruption. The director informed her that there was an emergency and he couldn't continue accompanying her. He suggested that a colleague behind him could take over. She assured him that it was fine since it was just a routine check, and she would explore the area on her own for a while before leaving. The director was concerned that it might go against the rules, but she reassured him that they were all under surveillance coverage and asked him what he was worried about. She encouraged him to go quickly and not delay, assuring him that they would watch out for her safety. They both left, and she activated the device on her ear, indicating that it was time to take action. The man agreed, disabling the surveillance on his computer and confirming that it was covered. She instructed the man to scan the area for their hideout, and he guided her to the northeast corner, where there should be a hollow in the wall or a mechanism that could be pressed down. He also informed her that she had 30 minutes. She pressed down the wall, revealing a hidden compartment, and was shocked to find numerous humans in capsules. The man asked her how it was, and she replied that it was worse than anticipated. He inquired if he should contact the head office for intervention, but she told him to wait for a moment. As she looked up, she noticed a woman in a tube with a fish tail beneath it. The woman's name, Jangling, was written on the description, which filled her with anger towards Tanu. Meanwhile, on Tian Ran's farm, the system indicated that his radiation-resistant corn was ready for harvesting. Han Han looked at them in awe and asked her to come and help him finish work early for dinner. She picked a corn and expressed her excitement about grilling it later. Tianren asked if she was already hungry, and she replied that she was too famished to continue picking corn. He instructed her to gather some driwood while he prepared grilled corn with butter, which made her jump with joy. While they were grilling the corn, Han Han asked what would happen if she kept eating like this and turned into a fat pig. Tianren explained that the special crop could enhance their physical fitness, and as their bodies grew, their nutrient requirements would increase. He assured her that eating more food wouldn't make them gain weight but would help them grow taller. The system displayed Han Han's strength, intelligence, speed, and endurance, all of which had increased significantly. Tianren pondered whether Han Han would turn into a King Kong Barbie, if she continued eating like this and expressed concern for his beloved little sister. However, he considered that he might be overthinking things. Han Han exclaimed how delicious the grilled corn was, and Tianren promised to make her a spicy one. He considered that even if Han Han's appetite grew as big as Luffy's in the future, they would still be able to afford it with their shelter. However, the system alerted him that a visitor was approaching, leaving him curious about who would visit at such a time. He saw Xiao Tian standing at their gate, holding the food that he had given to Xiao Tian's family. He approached the gate and questioned why Xiao Tian was there. Xiao Tian handed him the bag of food and explained that he wanted to return the favor. He mentioned that his family had received some food recently, so he brought it to him. He accepted the gesture, knowing that it was the food he had given to Xiao Tian's family, and he didn't think he had helped the wrong person. He inquired about where Xiao Tian obtained all the food, and Xiao Tian replied that he found it in their yard. It might have been secretly sent by a relative or someone who sneaked it in. Shyly, Xiao Tian mentioned that he also had another request, asking if it was okay to ask. He encouraged Xiao Tian to speak up, and Xiao Tian explained that he heard about a new grain shopping center on the outskirts of the southern side that had plenty of stock available. He wanted to borrow his truck to go there and buy some. He agreed and told Xiao Tian that he could borrow the truck. However, Xiao Tian informed him that he didn't have a driver's license, and the shopping center was in a remote location. He asked if he could drive him there. Panicking, Xiao Tian assured him that it wasn't too far away. He realized that Xiao Tian not only wanted to borrow the truck but also his driving skills. Xiao Tian also assured him that it wouldn't take too long and pleaded for his help. As he had been stuck on the farm recently, he had planned to visit the shopping center in a couple of days to inquire about the situation. However, since it was earlier than expected, he decided to drive Xiao Tian there. With the mechanical guards at home, he felt relieved even if Han Han was alone because with Xiao Bai, their combat power would be sufficient to handle even a small group. He agreed to Xiao Tian's request and mentioned that they were old acquaintances. 
However, he emphasized the need to return before noon to cook for Han Han, to which Xiao Tian agreed and apologized for the trouble. He instructed Xiao Tian to wait for him as he prepared the truck, and Xiao Tian agreed. Shortly after, he told Han Han to stay at home and not open the door if anyone called. He assured her that he would return soon. Han Han replied that she wouldn't worry because, the Bai, the upgraded version of their robot dog, was awesome. He asked her how it became, the Bai, and she explained that it was because it was an upgraded version, and she had tested it by watching it blow up big rocks with a, bam bam. He reminded her that she could only use, the Bai, in emergencies in the future as it could be dangerous otherwise. She agreed and assured him that she wouldn't blow up rocks anymore, momentarily silencing him. He patted her head and reassured her that he and her brother Xiao Tian would go to the shopping center and come back with candy for her. She asked if Xiao Tian was there because she wanted to say hello, but he questioned why she wanted to do that and reminded her that she couldn't reveal, the bye, in front of outsiders. He gently squeezed her cheek, and she reassured him that she understood because she was already six years old and not a child anymore. She added that besides her older brother, no one really talks to her at home, which makes her feel suffocated. As they drove out of the farm with the truck window down, Han Han eagerly looked at Xiao Tian, about to say something to him. However, Tianren put his hand on her head and pulled her hair, telling her to get out of the car so that Xiao Tian could leave early and he could be back in time to cook for her. They drove away, leaving Han Han angrily calling him a stinky big brother and shouting that she hadn't even finished saying hello. However, she eventually walked back, deciding to forget about it and watch cartoons instead. Meanwhile, Tianren and Xiao Tian were busy driving away. Tianren thought Han Han was a bit impulsive, but he knew she had a tendency to talk too much. The road was silent for a moment, and then Xiao Tian asked if it was safe for Han Han to be home alone because the world was chaotic, and he was afraid that bad guys might target the farm, putting Han Han in danger. Tianren asked who would bother with their small, rundown farm with no money or food. Xiao Tian asked if he hadn't left any self-defense tools for Han Han, and Tianren explained that she was only six years old and wouldn't know how to use them even if she had them. He assured Xiao Tian that there was no safer place than their farm at the moment and mentioned that he had electrified the farm gate, making it difficult for anyone to break in. Xiao Tian replied that it was a relief and then took out his phone from his pocket to text someone. Tianren glanced at him and noticed, but Xiao Tian quickly put his phone back and explained that he was worried about not having enough money, so he planned to borrow some from his friends. Tianren remained silent. Meanwhile, back at the farm, Han Han excitedly shouted about the Rainbow Warrior and pretended to attack imaginary enemies. She shouted that her brother Xiao Tian could also change his color and join the Rainbow Warriors like her. A sudden realization struck Han Han, leading her to wonder if Xiao Tian could potentially be a member of the Rainbow Warriors. She recalled that during her previous encounter with Xiao Tian, he appeared green, but this time, he was red. This stark contrast in his appearance raised suspicions in her mind. On the road, Tian Ran handed some money to Xiao Tian and told him to take it. Xiao Tian seemed hesitant and mentioned that he had already received a lot of help from Tianren, unsure if he could accept more money. However, Tianren insisted and forcefully placed the money in Xiao Tian's hand, telling him to keep it. He also advised Xiao Tian to stop talking nonsense because they still had to focus on driving. Xiao Tian expressed his gratitude and promised to repay Tianren's kindness. Following the navigator's instructions, they were told to go straight for 500 meters, then turn right in 300 meters. At 200 meters, there would be a fork in the road, and finally, they would need to turn right 100 meters ahead. However, Xiao Tian suddenly grabbed the wheel and suggested going left instead, claiming that the road on the right appeared to be closed. Tianren gave him a strange look and forcefully stopped the truck. Frustrated, he slammed his hand on the steering wheel, insisting that the road on the right couldn't be closed without a major natural disaster since it was a main road in the township that he often traveled on. He asked Xiao Tian where he had heard the news. Xiao Tian provided an explanation that a friend had informed him, but he insisted on knowing the friend's identity and urged him to call that friend so he could hear the news directly. Xiao Tian, in a desperate plea, grabbed his coat and begged him to trust him just this once, assuring him that he had no intention of causing harm. He requested that they turn left before it became too late. Despite being irritated by Xiao Tian's behavior, Tianren made the decision to turn the truck and follow the direction suggested by Xiao Tian. Meanwhile, 
another individual became upset upon noticing the truck changing lanes. The man shouted that something had occurred, and the driver angrily expressed his disbelief in Xiao Tian breaking his promise. A passenger in the car, named Nan, asked for guidance on what to do. Activated a device on his ear, indicating his preparedness, and informed his companions that their target was approaching them. He reminded them of Liang's instruction to prioritize their own survival. The man acknowledged the orders and confirmed his understanding. Nan instructed the driver to turn around and block the path of the truck, while the second team would launch an attack from behind. He wanted to test if they could successfully escape that day. On the other hand, Tianren drove at a fast pace, his anger intensifying. He angrily demanded an explanation from Xiao Tian, insisting that he should disclose what was happening. Xiao Tian repeatedly apologized, burdened by guilt for betraying Tianren, and admitted that he was solely responsible for their predicament. He explained that he had no choice as his father had been taken captive. Tianren was both shocked and furious, Tian Ran appealed for him to remain calm, to which he inquired about the identity and intentions of the individuals. Xiao Tian clarified that they were representatives from Tianren company who were aware of Tian Ran's possession of medicine for the poisoning. They had deceived him into leaving the farm, planning to seize Han Han in his absence in order to coerce Tianren into complying with their demands. Tian Ran grew visibly enraged, expressing disbelief that they had involved in the abduction of a six-year-old child. As Tian Ran glanced at the side mirror, he noticed the kidnappers closing in on them. Determined, Tian Ran accelerated the car, while Xiao Tian anxiously exclaimed about the pursuers drawing closer. Filled with anger, Tian Ran sternly commanded him to be quiet. Tianren instructed Xiao Tian to remain silent and angrily questioned the authenticity of the information provided, suspecting it may have been a test to assess the farm's security and Xiao Tian's connection to those people. Tianren noted that even when Xiao Tian appeared to be casually using his phone earlier, he was actually communicating with them. While Han Han was enjoying his snacks, Xiao He noticed something outside the farm. Group of men wearing suits and carrying weapons, accompanied by a backhoe, outside the farm. Xiao Tian expressed his apologies and pleaded with Tianren to hand over the medicine, citing the overwhelming number of pursuers and their slim chances of escaping. Tianren expressed deep disappointment in Xiao Tian, emphasizing his reluctance to harm him but struggling to comprehend the extent of the harm inflicted upon Han Han. Tearfully, Xiao Tian apologized, expressing regret for his actions, but emphasized that with his father's life in danger, there was no turning back. He stressed the imminent threat of capture, urging Tianren to surrender the medicine. Frustrated, Tianren tightly gripped the steering wheel of the truck and informed Xiao Tian that he would address their issues later. Unfortunately, neither of them had a chance to leave the farm alive. In the midst of this turmoil, Xiao Tian recalled his father's joyous remark about finally feeling better. However, he had unintentionally frightened his father to the point of distress. In response, his father asked him about the food he had consumed that led to his improved condition. He responded that he was incredibly hungry and couldn't bear it any longer. At that point, he discovered an apple in the cellar that appeared to be uncontaminated. His father acknowledged his desperation but questioned how he could dare to eat something from the cellar when he knew everything in there had touched the ground. He explained to his father that they had been subsisting on meager porridge for several days, so he took a chance with the apple to avoid starving to death sooner or later. However, his father scolded him and dismissed his explanation, stating that he had borrowed food and they had also received a food shipment. Furthermore, there was a miraculous potion that had saved his life, which he believed was a divine gift since they couldn't bear to see him suffer so much. Many people had perished from accidentally consuming poisonous vegetables, but he was the sole survivor, so they planned to visit their ancestors' graves later to express gratitude for their blessings. However, he pondered whether a true god would allow such disasters to occur in the world, and the unidentified person who provided the potion didn't want their identity revealed. His father asked if he was still hungry, but he couldn't fathom how much food that person could actually provide while their own family was left to starve without even the basic necessities for survival. He felt that life was unjust and abruptly stood up with a thought in his mind, rushing out of their house. His father inquired where he was going, and he assured him that he would return soon. Despite his father's attempt to dissuade him, he told his father to leave him alone. Shortly afterward, he arrived at a house, and the occupant inside shouted at him to stop knocking and identify himself. He called the man, Meow, and Meow was astonished to see him, asking him what he wanted. 
Looking down and realizing he was covered in blood, he explained to Meow that their home had been robbed, and he wanted to check the surveillance video of their house. Meow questioned his statement and pointed to the device on the roof, which he confirmed was the one he needed and recalled its 360 degrees wireless monitoring capability. Meow agreed, and he asked Meow to lend it to him so he could assess the extent of his injuries inflicted by the thief. Meow urged him to hurry as it was bedtime. He proceeded to review the footage, knowing that the camera had a clear view of the alley near his house. As he examined the screen, he wondered who the culprit was and was taken aback to see the license plate of a truck near his house. Afterward, he returned home, and his father asked him what he had been doing. He informed his father that he had discovered who had saved his life. His father inquired about the identity of the savior, and he replied that it was their young boss, Lai. He had reviewed the CCTV footage and found that the truck's arrival and departure times aligned with the time of his rescue. His father exclaimed that their young boss, Lai, was indeed a kind person who provided them with food and saved their lives. However, hesitated for a moment and asked if he had heard the news that the Tannen group was offering a generous reward for finding a cure. Calling him a troublemaker, his father questioned his intentions. He explained that he simply aimed to make their lives a bit easier in this harsh world. He asked his father about the remaining duration of the limited food they had in their plan once it ran out. His father was taken aback by this question, but he persisted by questioning whether his father expected their boss, Young Lee, to continue providing them with food. In response, his father violently slapped him, accusing him of wanting to repay Tannen's kindness with ingratitude. He even threatened to break his legs if he dared to leave. However, he asked his father if he didn't comprehend their current predicament and explained that if they wanted to survive, they could only rely on themselves. He believed he was merely doing what was necessary to stay alive. On the road, Tian Ran felt frustrated as the enemy continued to pursue him closely, making it difficult for him to shake them off. Two additional cars blocked his path, so he forcefully stopped his truck to avoid colliding with the cars in front. Men emerged from the cars, and the other vehicle behind him blocked his escape route. He stepped out of the car, holding Zat Tian, and one of the men teasingly asked if he was Li Tian Ran. The man introduced himself as Chen Nan, affiliated with Chanan Pharmaceutical Company. Chen Nan clarified that they used this unconventional method to meet him but had no ulterior motive. They were aware that he possessed the cure for the poisoning pandemic and wanted to discuss cooperation. They proposed that if he provided the cure, they would join forces and generate significant profits together. He inquired about the consequences if he refused, and Chen Nan stated that there were only two options. The first option was voluntary cooperation, leading to a favorable outcome where they could all profit with smiles on their faces. He asked about the second option, and Chen Nan replied that they could acquire the cure by any means necessary and could always make him talk. He explained to Chen Nan that he had stumbled upon the cure for the poisoning epidemic purely by chance, and there was only one dose, which he had already administered to Xiao Tian. He apologized to Chen Nan for their wasted journey. He noticed that the individuals accompanying Chen Nan didn't carry guns, and Xiao Tian was already useless to them. If they had guns, they could have simply injured him without the need for further discussion. Chen Nan took out his phone and remarked that it seemed he wouldn't be swayed even if he saw his own demise. Chen Nan then made a phone call to his men, inquiring if they were at the farm gate and instructing them to enter and capture the little girl, intending to feed her the poisonous fruits. Chen Nan playfully questioned the purpose of electrifying his broken fence when their men were skilled in insulation protection. He advised him that if he intended to oppose Chan and company, he needed to recognize his own value and willingly cooperate to make money together. However, Chen Nan was taken aback when he emitted a powerful light and expressed his deep hatred for threats, leaving Chen Nan wondering how such a humble farmer could possess such terrifying eyes. He warned them that they should be grateful they hadn't invaded the farm because, with him present, they could prolong their lives, at least for a little while. Chen Nan ordered him to stop talking and cooperate for the little girl's survival. Chen Nan believed that there were many of them, so they shouldn't fear him, but he simply stared at them, leading Chen Nan to conclude that he wouldn't cooperate. Chen Nan then instructed his men to sever his limbs and leave him alive. Meanwhile, at the farm, men dressed in suits were outside the property, using an excavator to demolish the wall. The noise infuriated Han Han, who shouted that it was so loud that she couldn't enjoy her cartoon in peace. She expressed her wish to blow the heads off those bad guys. On the road, 
Chan Ran was engaged in a battle with the men, and one by one, they were being thrown back towards Chen Nan. Chen Nan looked back in surprise and noticed that Cha flat stomach, leaving him curious about what was happening. He remembered that anti-personnel weapons were meant to be found only on the farm, so his plan was to lure that guy away from his farm. Meanwhile, a man near the farm was using binoculars and noticed that something was amiss. Rocks were being blasted apart, and although it was a significant distance, his best guess was that it involved explosive weaponry. Back on the road, Tian Ran attacked the men surrounding him, leaving Chen Nan astounded by the farmer's immense power. Tian Ran hadn't anticipated that the physical enhancements from consuming radiation-resistant crops would be so formidable. In just a few days, his physical attributes had significantly improved, including strength, speed, bone density, and reflexes. Tian Ran decided to create some distance, believing he had tested his physical capabilities enough. He then retrieved a gun from his jacket and aimed it at the men, catching them off guard. Chen Nan realized he had been careless in assuming that firearms wouldn't be necessary. He was surprised to see that Tian Ran also had a gun. Chen Nan warned him not to mess with the influential figure backing him and to consider the consequences if he laid a hand on him. Chen Nan believed that as long as he could get close to Chen Ran, the gun would be useless. Tian Ran acknowledged that Chen Nan was right and proceeded to shoot the men, informing Chen Nan that he still had some use. However, there was no need to spare the others. Chen Nan fell to the ground as bullets whizzed by, and he was hit near the ears, causing him to cry out in pain. While the other men were shot and killed, Chen Nan quickly fled, thinking he should hide in the woods and wait until Tian Ran ran out of bullets. Tian Ran attempted to pursue Chen Nan while firing at him, but Chen Nan managed to find cover behind a nearby rock. Chen Nan believed that Tian Ran had stopped and assumed that he must have run out of bullets, which he considered advantageous. He planned to hide for a while and then launch a surprise attack on Tian Ran, thinking he still had a chance of winning. Unbeknownst to Chen Nan, Tian Ran was actually positioned above him, wearing a smile as he examined the system. He opened his inventory, retrieved his pistol from the warehouse, and reloaded it. Chen Nan heard the sound of the reload and looked back, questioning why Tian Ran still had a bullet. He wondered if Tian Ran was a martial artist, but Tian Ran simply shot Chen Nan. Meanwhile, at the farm, the robotic bird fired a shot at the man outside. The system informed Hanan that, in accordance with her instructions, the last intruder's head had been blown off and asked for her next instruction. Hanan, concerned that her big brother would be upset if he discovered what she had done and might not like her anymore, shook her head. She was determined to dispose of the evidence outside the door before her big brother returned. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more content. Feel free to leave a comment down below sharing your thoughts or suggestions. If you want to stay updated on all our latest uploads, click the notification bell icon. And hey, why not check out some of our other videos popping up on the screen right now. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by liking, sharing, and subscribing. It really means a lot, peace.